So I'm here today with my friend Muthu, who is a really great PvE player, and he's actually helped me broaden my horizons and transition from a PvP-only player to really enjoying a lot of PvE lately. We do a lot of raids together and strikes and Grandmasters and everything, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to introduce you guys to Muthu and learn a little bit about how to get deeper into the endgame of Destiny, and specifically we're going to talk a lot about building your first builds and getting mods and things that are really going to help you to beat more of those endgame activities. Like one thing I always manage to always focus on is like stat distribution with whether it's good pieces of armor or not. I have a standard for what I collect for my style of builds because I specifically am that type of mindset with I have to be perfect or it's not good enough for me. Whether a new player can or a returning player, whoever even knows how to get to that point is another thing. And what are you looking for like armor wise if you're looking for different stats? Basically a couple things to think about. There's like the total amount of stats. So like maybe mm -hmm. a piece of armor has 55 or 60 or 65 total stats and then they can be distributed in different ways where sometimes there's activities that give what's called like spiky distribution. So you might get like mm -hmm. a lot of mobility or a lot of recovery or resilience or whatever. And then there's also like master working a piece of armor if you're a new player that adds 12 stats to each so it can get a little confusing so two, first two of all per. it's sorry two points per stat so first of all what are you looking like what kind of armor is worth it keeping for you as a more experienced player who has a big collection and then also like what activities do you like to do to farm for that kind of so like where should a new player be investing their time to start building armor that's worth turning into a build so currently in terms of sources there is a handful of decent ways of getting it. Some of them require owning like DLC. Some require owning season passes. So like the first one that I primarily look at is probably going to be, this is more end game content, but it's sourced from Pit of Heresy. The final boss, when it's in the, ro when the Pit of Heresy is in the weekly rotation for the dungeon pinnacle, it is farmable. And the final boss is guaranteed to drop an armor piece with 16 points in a single stat on both top and bottom half of the stat distribution chart. And I'll get into that later on how stats are actually distributed on armor pieces, but it's guaranteed two spikes on the armor drop that is guaranteed to not be a class item and always armor from that boss as well. That's probably my number one go-to whenever that rotator is around, but uh, the next and honestly easiest source after that is going to be currently in this season. Actually, it's from previous seasons. The Helm War Table, which is, I believe, Season of the Risen. You can pass, if you level it up, you can passively get the Risen Umbral Energy. Otherwise, you can do the PsyOps Battlegrounds to earn the Risen Umbral, umbral Energy. And Yeah, I feel like I get that even just from playing PvP right, with the way yes. it's, it's built yes. up. Because I always have so much of that stuff and I don't really use it as much as I probably should anymore. If, if but, you uh, have it... If you yeah. have it leveled up, if you have the table leveled up, playing playlist activities, and I think even like Legend or Master Lost Sectors have a chance of giving you one an Umbral Energy, and it only costs four to focus an Umbral Ingram into a specific high stat piece of armor. Yeah. Now, there is certain ways of rigging how these armors drop. In about a year ago, when Season of the Splicer was around, that was probably my favorite one, because you could you couldn't decide what slot you were getting the armor. So like whether it was a helmet, gloves, chest or boots, but you could decide what the major stat distribution was. So like you could do intellect focused armor. And then on your ghost, you could select one of the six mods, mobility, resilience, recovery, discipline, intellect or strength, armorer mod, a two to four point mod on your ghost. And that could decide where the other half of it went. And you could essentially rig your drops you the only thing you couldn't decide is what slot you got it in you have the war table which is from season of the risen which is still currently available until lightfall releases if you were to level it up you can get risen umbral energy from completing random activities that allow you to be able to focus your umbral ingrams that you randomly get within the game to a specific stat focused distribution so you can use any of the armor or mods on your ghost that you can focus a minimum of 10 in the specific stat slot that you choose. So if you choose a mobility focused armor on your ghost and you choose to focus a helmet at the war table or from Season of the Risen, you can 
guarantee that you will get 20 points in that slot because that's how the ingram focusing works or the armor it takes what your arm whatever you have slotted in your ghost and guarantees 20 points in that slot you can also do the same thing with last season's stuff or season of the haunted stuff but the only downfall about that one is that you don't passively earn that risen umbral energy you would have to grind containment on the leviathan which oh isn't it's, which <laughs> isn't the most exciting content ever yeah it's just a glorified public event space that used to be a raid although if you're a newer player and you don't have some of the weapons like Ostring or beloved that are really great for pvp or the Callus mini tool which is great for Callus pve it probably is worth spending some time there just because those are all really strong the sidearm as well drang is really good yeah. so all of those weapons are fantastic it's probably worth it if you're new to spend some time there and then in yes. the the benefit is while you're spending your time there you can also focus and get some good gear from it potentially yes absolutely now um, oh go ahead there are multiple other sources but they are from more end game activities I would consider them more difficult because they are master and non-match. Otherwise, you could do or you can get them from whether it's normal dungeons. Any dungeon can drop up to maximum stat distribution, which is 68 on a legendary piece and I believe 73 on an exotic, which is whatever. But technically, anything that rewards quote unquote high stat armor can drop up to 68 overall stat distribution. Now. My specific sought after distribution is usually specifically with the resilience changes that came this season or last season, which is ridiculously overpowered and currently gives 40% damage reduction at all times. If you're at tier 10 resilience, I always shoot for a minimum or my like my dream armor stat roll is 16 in the resilience slot, 16 or 16 in the class ability energy slot. So if it's a Titan armor piece, I would go for 16 resil, 16 recovery still. And this is per armor piece, just so this people are, armor we're not talking yep. about like your full stat. This is like in the no, one. This is, this is just like a helmet specifically. You go 16 in resil, and then you go 16 in your class ability stat. So if you're a hunter, that's mobility. If you're a Titan, that's resilience. So in that case, you would go 16 in the resil and 16 in recovery because recovery is the second most important stat. And then after that, for Warlock, you is the Rift ability is for Recov. So you would also go Resilience and Recovery. You would try and shoot for that 16-16. Because, oh, and then the bottom half, which I will get in shortly, what, the, what I mean by top half, bottom half. The bottom half of the armor is, I believe, the maximum you can get in a, col or in a row at that point. On a max 68 piece is 30. So technically, you could go 16-16-30. So 16 mobility, 16 resilience on, for a hunter, and then 30 discipline. That's like the ultimate role for something like an Omni build or something. And everything has a minimum of two, right? So everything has a minimum of two. Yeah, that's you'll never why get I'm to saying, zero. That's why I'm getting at 16, 16 yep. and not 17, 17, because because it's 68 maximum legendary role. It's split up in two halves on the piece of armor. You have mobility, resilience, and recovery that can take up 34 points total. And then it's split in the bottom half, which is discipline, intellect, and strength. So because you're guaranteed to have two points in each slot or in each row or stat, whichever, that's why I'm saying 16, 16, 2 in the top half and then 32, 2. Yep. So then you can get the perfect stat distribution because, or you could even go for like a 16, 16 and go for like a 28 because then if you master work it, it becomes 30. And then you only need one of that mod, one three point of that mod, which is like a plus 10 mod for that stat to fill in the rest of the way or for discipline specifically. So so then three pieces would give you 30, 30, 30. And then that other piece could be oh, intellect or yeah. something. So like and it, for people who that might be a little too complicated to like to add it all up like that, there's some really cool tools you can use as well. Both DIM and then the D2 armor picker are cool websites you can use that will allow you to basically look at all the sets across all of your armor pieces and it will optimize them to give you the best stat distribution if it's like a little bit too much <laughs> to keep tabs on exactly what you're looking for that's a great way to to put together those builds but i think it's good to know what you're looking for which is really mm -hmm. valuable just so you know what to keep and what to get rid of yeah d2 armor picker is definitely one of my best friends <laughs> oh it's awesome yeah it's so it, it, useful 
Yeah, like it, it made me find out that the other day that I could get quad 100s on a void build with Dragon Shadow. Yeah, and yeah, that's it's absolutely nuts. But yeah, um, so, while we're talking about that too, just one other way to get high stat armor is both Iron Banner and Trials. If you're newer, yes. might be a little bit intimidating and maybe not the best place to start. But Iron Banner, you can get it just from participating. You literally just have to play the enough games to get the pinnacle rewards, and then you'll get those drops and a lot of them will have like pretty high set distributions so that's another good way if you're into pvp that you can get some good yes. stuff yes those are other great sources then you have your as i mentioned before you have your dungeon sources like your grasp of avarice your pit of heresy your prophecy and so on and then you have all your raids obviously raids are usually not so lowable yeah so, <laughs> generally or, speaking or that. match made but uh, yes all of the end game content has a chance of Usually on average it's 58 stat and up. I personally usually don't keep anything less than 64 specifically because I go for those try and go for those perfect stat distributions because I yeah. like to ha I like to have my synergy in my builds specifically. I'm about the same. Usually I might be a little low like if something's really spiky at 60, I might hold on to right. it, but generally speaking around that like mm -hmm. 64, 65 is like my cutoff point where it, I just don't keep it <laughs> unless yeah. it has like really insane spikes in particular categories that I know that I'll want for something. Yeah, like I got a weird piece the other day. It was like 32 mobility, 28 strength, and the rest were twos. Yeah. Another thing to keep in mind is that the current way that mods are set up, if you want to basically buy like more recovery or more intellect on your build, it costs more in terms of the energy in your mod slots to be able to supplement that with mods. So sometimes having the really high stat distribution in either of those categories can be more beneficial because then you can fit other cheaper mods into mm -hmm. your build just like neat tip yeah that leads to my other point the reason i go for such high stat armor is just to feed to your n only needing smaller mods to supplement towards your stat goal like breaking another tier for a shorter cooldown on your grenade or your super specifically build crafting in this game is super fun and unreasonably broken like the there is a certain build on Titan right now that involves storm grenades, the exotic chest piece, heart of the most light and swapping. It, it involves a lot of the armor swapping, but you're able to throw a storm grenade every three seconds or something like that. For, and it's unbelievably stupid on how <laughs> broken build that's crafting good. can be in this game. Wow, that's because crazy. not only heart of the most light charging it, but you have it's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's I like especially with now like the elemental well builds being so strong and diverse which can get you full ability energy on getting one ability kill it's absurd but the my main gripe with it all is being able to actually get all the mods yeah that is a big problem for new players i found in fact i've made a couple new player guides recently and it's really disheartening when i, I tell people the best way to get mods is just to wait every day and just check Ada mm -hmm. one or Banshee in the tower and just see, and I guess Banshee only sells weapon mods too. Yeah. So you're going to get all those fairly quickly if you just pay attention to him. But then Ada is the one that really is stingy because only sells four mods and there's, I don't know, like a hundred or more mods probably. Uh, <laughs> there's a see, lot of them. Let me see the exact yeah. number. I, by the way, I went through this pain and Mutin knows this well, because I literally, <laughs> I've played every season since, I don't know, since, basically since the beginning of Destiny 2, but one of the seasons they introduced all of the elemental well mods and i was really only playing pvp at the time like i just didn't really care much about pve that season and so i didn't collect all those mods and then like later and also i don't think they were all that powerful when they first came out like they they seemed to they were foreshadowed or not foreshadowed they were overshadowed by warmind cells and yeah. protective light exactly so i just wasn't that into them and i didn't really bother collecting them then later on of course like the charge with light mods and the war mind stuff got nerfed and elemental wells are like the way to go for everything and i didn't have mm -hmm. those mods so okay. every single day i had to check a to one and see <laughs> what she was selling and every time i found one that i was missing i sent Mu a screenshot of me collecting it but it took what it took me months to get all of them yeah. and yeah. i wasn't even missing all that many but i really feel for new players because yeah it's a terrible experience i hope that bungie has some better way to get them i would i've suggested some things on Twitter yes. over, over time, but I hope that there's some more friendly way. For the meantime though, as we're recording this, the best thing to do is literally every day go check Ada1 and see what she's selling 
And pro tip, you can do that without even being in the game. If you just go to dim, there's a thing you can tab over and look at the mm -hmm. vendors and it'll show what she's selling. Um, you so. can also go to light.gg. Yeah, yeah, that's either way. Another alternative website mm -hmm. that you can use. The way the thing I like about it, the dim one is that it shows you what you already have. So if you don't remember, uh, that way you can oh go oh, this one I don't have. And there's also a website called destinysets.com that you can use, and that way you can look at all the mods you're missing, and it's like a puzzle piece so you can fill in one one at a time as you collect them all, like Pokemon. Yeah, yeah it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's a really silly system, but the. I guess the takeaway is that it's really important to, to grab them because some of these mods only come around like every couple months and so if you miss a really good one you're gonna be bumming because it's sometimes the cornerstone of like a really cool build that you could put together yeah the one thing that gets me is like even the generalized mods like your non-elemental combat style mods you don't get it's not default as far yeah. as i know yeah like i know in this season what season are we in 18 I think <laughs> season of plunder there yeah i know in season of plunder they released a chest in the helm called gift of the thunder gods it actually gives you some solid mods that you can take advantage of in the armor set that you're given which also is a free power boost if you're new like you can get sustained charge supercharged stacks on stacks taking charge and heavy handed all in just one fell swoop it's obviously they're primarily targeting arc usability but it, I think it's a pretty sweet thing that they did there. But realistically, they should do it with all 71 combat mods. Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention while we're talking about kind of mods and stat distributions together is that some of the mods will give you bonuses as a second. If you read the description, for example, the most yes. popular ones for PvP, almost any hunter especially will use <laughs> Radiant Light and Powerful Friends together. And it's because they're both arc mods. And so what they do is they activate each other. And so if you read the second line, one of them will give you plus 20 mobility and one gives you plus 20 strength. And so for free, just by using both of those mods, you're getting an automatic 40 stats to your build. And for Hunter, having that extra 20 both mobility is stats. Yeah, very important. That's like a real, pretty much any PVP build I ever put together is going to have that mm. combination. It's so good for Hunter. I know that there's other ones that don't give you bonus stats but they give you bonus other things like on striking light if you have the secondary bonus active you just gain increased da damage resistance while sprinting yeah it's really helpful it's, also it's super um, it's like a 25 percent damage re reduction in pve yeah that's so powerful there's also for pvp players there's the quick charge one which makes the shotguns and submachines i think is it sidearms i forget what other weapon fusion like, rifles shotguns submachine guns and swords. okay there you go in particular, submachine guns and shotguns for me are what I care about for this, but it makes it a huge handling boost just by having that activated by having another arc mod in your build. So there's some cool secondary effects to be paying attention. Yeah, and then there's also certain mods will reduce stats, which primarily are all void, and the arc ones are the only ones that have extra bonuses, which are which I find strange, but that's strange. Yeah, but like the void ones are you're usually pretty beneficial i'd say obviously you have protection stuff you have there's extra reserves you can get extra special ammo but i think that mod is irrelevant now that because special finisher exists plus ammo finders stacks on stacks is good for niche builds when you need to get more charged with light like you have surprise attack if you want extra sidearm damage yeah so going down that line of talking if you're a newer player and you're trying to put together your first builds how do you start no, I guess no. it's difficult because there's a lot of mods you could be missing, but mm -hmm. what are some of the most core mods that you should be looking for and potentially implementing in your build? And like, how would you, if you were on a brand new account, let's say, how would you go about building your first setup? First, it obviously it's getting the mods, but I'd say the, if you're looking at like a charge with life build, the most critical one is taking charge, hands down. You, it's like, there's three different types of mods uh, specifically. There's, I have, a, I actually have a video on it for a tier list also explaining further detail regarding all of this going over every single mods effect and how it actually works i call the three categories generators like effects or modifiers and then spenders usually they're color coded so generators tend to have a green icon as the mod symbol and spenders have yellow anything in between is white so like you uh, if you look at taking charge that's green so that means it generates charge with light if you look at high energy fire, it's yellow. 
if you kill something, it spends that charge with light. It's a nice little thing that people don't tend to notice. And then, so like getting back to your original point, the like taking charge is usually my number one need for charge with light builds. Depending on the content, shield break charges is, is good. If you need to refill your start your stacks and the content has the modifier called match game, which just gives en enemies more shields, which I find more annoying than difficult. The like number one damage bonus for charge with light builds is high energy fire. It's a no, it's a no brainer mod. It's your charge. You deal 20% more damage with your weapons. It's, it was like the number one thing that people use to de defeat Rolk on day one for follow the disciple. Yeah, it's very powerful. I used to be big in PVP too, but not as easy to yeah. activate anymore. So yeah. in those mods that you're talking about, so taking charge is really good because for, especially in PVE, whenever you pick up an orb, it automatically makes you charge with light, which is like orbs mm -hmm. are everywhere in PVE. <laughs> so it's very, they, they used to be now uh, it's a little more prevalent or yeah, I guess that's not a good prevalent, point. but a little more. Now that our master work guns don't rare. automatically so, generate them like that. Anymore. Yeah. So the only way that weapons, that's where like other build crafting part things come in. That's where other armor mods come in. So like on helmets, you can get siphon mods, which depends on what element of weapon you're using. So if there's harmonic siphon, if you are using a weapon that matches your subclass. So like if you're on a void super and you're using the monarch, the void, a void bow, all every other or each multi kill will generate an orb. And this is, it's, I think it's on like a six second cooldown. I'm not 100% on that. I think it's six or eight seconds. But then if you equip two harmonic siphons, the orb is more effective towards your super regen as well. But like you can, if you change the element of your helmet, you can equip, if it's a void helmet, you have void siphon, kinetic siphon, and harmonic siphon. Of course, void siphon and kinetic siphon are three points. So it takes a little bit more to invest into it. But if you use a harmonic siphon, it, usually is the best most beneficial to you what else so if we expand into let's say war mine cells war mine cells are a little bit different in it, in its way of behavior and i'm ha very happy they got nerfed to be honest because it, they, it, it it, they were busted <laughs> like yeah Im imagine like something the something like triple the radius of a well of radiance doing the damage of a rocket yeah like it's really not okay on how big of a race it I is. I still remember the, the day one Deep Sun Crypt raid yes. running a War Mind Cell build, and I was just clearing ads basically for our group, and I effectively controlled the entire room just by making War Mind Cells mm -hmm. and blowing them up. It's That's all I had to do. It's so yeah. insanely powerful. That plus like Wither Horde and everything you could do to yeah. just be auto generating them. It was so crazy. It's a time, definitely. And then there's mods that you can essentially chain War Mind Cells with other War Mind Cells. But this one specifically, I like and I hate at the same. They are still relatively good. Like they're not busted, but like they're still fun to use and stuff. But can you explain for people how to generate them? I, like, yeah, I was just going to get to that. Yeah, cool. The they're still good, not busted, but they're definitely still good. But you have to use an Ikelos or Seven Seraph weapon. So there's only a handful of these weapons that exist in the game and they're only available through Zerg. Dares of Eternity and sometimes Banshee, maybe. I know the first two sources are correct. I do not, I am not 100% on Banshee. I don't think they come from there. But like you have the Seventh Seraph Carbine, which is the auto rifle. You have the Seventh Seraph SMG. I don't remember the actual name of it. It's just Seventh Seraph something. <laughs> something and it's like an SMG. That. G, There's by the, the way, I love that it, thing. It, I've always enjoyed that SMG. I, I love the gun model. I hate the sound. Oh, he's so certain like certain things will get me. Like you have the Ikelos SMG, which is one of the, which I think it's still one of the most used, oh, not sorry. most used. I meant the, Up SM, until I meant the, the, the Ikelos SMG. SMG. I like the Ikelos uh, one. I don't like the, the 750. Yeah, yeah, just to be clear. Yeah. So the, uh, like you have the Ikelos SMG, which pre Witch Queen was probably the most used SMG in PVE. Then you have the, like, and then you have special weapons. Like you have the Ikelos Sniper, which is a 140, which is honestly pretty bad. You have Ikelos shotgun, but I would never be using that for for generating war mine cells. I, primarily, it's a I look at it as a PvP shotgun, mm -hmm. even though it has one of the best PVE rolls in the game. It's it, it, it was my one of my S tiers for my shotgun DPS video, but it they're good, 
but I can't consider them good enough in comparison to the final mod se selection, which is the Elemental Well mods, which they expanded on so well in the year of Beyond Light, it was baffling. So I forget when the mods actually came out. I think it was the summer of Prophecy. I think it was right. six months prior to Beyond Light was when the initial mods came out and it was just like you had your neutral mods like your melee or you didn't even have me melee well maker that didn't come out until after beyond light you had elemental ordinance which creates a, an elemental matching your subclass when you get a grenade kill you had elemental light which is a well on super kill elemental armaments which is a chance it's not even a stacking chance like warmind cells oh and i should probably get in more detail about how warmind cells actually spawned but Elemental armaments is if you're matching your subclass with a with a weapon, you can you have a chance of making an Ellie well with that weapon. One of the strongest elemental well mods, in my opinion, is Font of Might. And that one is a 25% damage bonus for 10 seconds when you pick up a well that matches your subclass energy. Or yeah, matches your subclass energy. And it gives you a bonus damage to that element type. So if you're on a solar super using a solar power weapon, linear fusion rifle, whatever, and you pick up a solar, you could deal 25% more damage for 10 seconds. And it's very strong, specifically in King's Fall now, with how many boss damage checks there are, you're just able to pump out numbers like crazy. Yeah, and that has that really cool stacking thing with, was it Elemental Time Dilation? Yes, right, can... Elemental Time Dilation adds base five, I believe it's five seconds per copy after the first. So like, you have one font of might on, then you equip an elemental time dilation on another piece, which is stasis, and then that adds five seconds base. So font of might now lasts 15 seconds. And if you equip a second font of might alongside all of that, it will last 20 seconds. It just, it just keeps stacking. And the way that the elemental mod, elemental mods are worded sometimes are confusing. So like on time dilation, it just says increasing the duration of the effect for each copy of the mod you have equipped some people might interpret that you need multiple of time dilation equipped which is how i exactly read it the first time and it behaves the complete opposite where you only need one of that mod to stack the rest now this is this brings me to another point is another great mod which is solar and that's bountiful wells it is easily one of the strongest mods in my opinion because if you were to make a well, you make a second. So if you get a grenade kill with elemental ordnance and you have bonding for wells on, it makes two instead of one. And the key thing about this is that anytime you pick up an elemental, if it matches your subclass, it gives you ability energy for all three neutral abilities, so your class ability, your melee and your grenade. If it doesn't match your subclass, it gives you energy to the lowest charged ability. So if you just use your class, it'll go to there and it makes ability looping builds so much fun and so good. And it even works with, and like elemental well mods can even work with other weapons too. Like another solar mod that I would guarantee you'd have fun with if you comboed elemental ordnance, bountiful wells, and explosive well maker. You can, let's say you use fusion grenades. You can throw a fusion grenade, kill something with it, and it can it has a chance to make four with three mods. And normally, if you think, oh, I put elemental ordnance on bountiful wells, let me put on another Ellie ordnance, and I'll make three instead. But the thing is, is that you can't with explosive well maker it triggers on so many other effects it's unbelievable like you can trigger it off of volatile rounds on void like that counts as an explosion a wither horde sitting on the ground counts as an explosion it's such an expansive mod world that you can explore into and certain things can get really out of hand with it and one nice thing is that the what bungie has done with the mod system is that they made them hybrid so that you can cross over which i what do you mean by that so what i mean by that you can make elemental mods work with charge with light or you can make war mind cells work with charge with light they didn't make war mind cells and elemental wells cross over but technically they can so if you use a mod that adds solar damage to your war mind cell and your war mind cell kills something with the explosion you can potentially proc uh explosive wall maker yeah that's so cool so Isn't, like there's uh, a good so like for example the crossover between league wells and charge with light there's a mod called elemental charge you pick up which honestly i think is better than 
taking charge in certain sub certain circumstances. If you pick up a well that matches your subclass, it gives you two stacks of charges light instead of one. But if it doesn't match your subclass, it gives you one stack. So it matches what an orb does. And honestly, elemental wells are a lot more prevalent than orbs nowadays. Then what's the uh, the stasis setup you can do with where you basically stasis shards turn into well? Yeah. Right? Yes, so cool. I love it with my hunter build specifically. So if you have something like, so I think on hunter, it's called Grim Harvest. The This is an aspect for stasis. On Titan, it's called Tectonic Harvest. And Warlock, it's called Glacial Harvest, I believe. Don't quote me on this. If you equip, it's on the stasis armor piece. There's a mod called Elemental Shards. And it specifically says that it does not apply on Crucible Trials or Iron Banner, which I think is really funny. But any stasis shard that you were to create, if you pick it up or if you're using like the fragment at, uh, Whisper of Conduction, I believe it is, where it sucks them towards you, you can utilize them in an elemental well build, but it does have a short cooldown when you pick one up. It's honestly a really great mod in a stasis build. Yeah, that's so, I love that setup. I want to give a quick shout out to my favorite mod, which is Seeking Wells. <laughs> this is one yes. I was, I totally underestimated how awesome this thing was when I first learned about it. I was like, oh, what's the big deal? But when you have this on, it basically vacuums up every elemental in the area right to you that you mm -hmm. produce. And it also goes to teammates, right, too. So if you yes. produce them and then they'll also go to your teammates. So if like you can be like the favorite person in the strike if you're using this because you're generating a lot of those elemental wells and then it's also automatically going to your teammates. So if they have any sort of build that benefits from it, they're going to mm -hmm. be much more powerful. Even, but it's even if they don't awesome. have a build that benefits from it, they benefit from it. They'll still get the ability energy and stuff. Yeah, right? like so. that's the great part about it. It's like you don't have to be invested in it as a teammate player for them to for that person to be yeah. beneficial <laughs> to it. You're buffing them whether they want it or not. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah. great. Like the fact that one mod can benefit six people at a time. It is, makes so many great. of these. Yeah, it makes so many of the builds like really just feel so much better when you don't have to run around and go pick mm -hmm. up the elemental because you're like instantaneously getting all the benefits to it. For example, like the I put a video out recently with Thunder arc or was it the Arc yeah Arc 3.0 Titan where throw the storm grenades and it just blows everything up. But then you're creating all of these arc elemental wells and then they're all vacuuming up to you because of seeking. It's just so cool. It's like a really fun loop. Yeah, it's the same thing with that Warlock build that you had included in that video. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Like you zoop into all of them and just destroy them. But then all the wells fall around you and just like, I don't want to run in a circle. So they all yeah. just suck into you. Yeah, <laughs> so start it all over again. And yeah, it's really cool. And it's a massive radius too. It's mm -hmm. 20 meters it's unbelievable yeah so definitely if you ever see that one for sale and you're not yeah. sure which ones to buy <laughs> that one that's probably my favorite the thing I, is I it's not it the most underrated mod yeah, it's not good by itself but in the context of a good build it just makes it's just so much smoother to run it because like all the work of running around and picking them all up is just not there it's, anymore it's the reason why on a stasis shard build i pretty much always run whisper of conduction yeah which yeah. attracts all the shards towards you wait and with that i always i also always run whisper of rhyme which heals you or gives you an overshield so like the synergy is there and you just have to put it together what other elemental mods do you feel are maybe a little underrated or think just even ones that people should be excited about if they see them pop up that they can buy i'd say for let's say void let's look at void mods i believe the number the highest protection mod in the game is well of tenacity so with the recent resilience buffs um, being 40% at 100 or 40% damage reduction at 100 res resilience, tenacity also stacks on top of that for a 50% damage reduction. And it lasts six seconds when you pick up a void. I don't use this too much anymore because of that resilience change. I'm more focused on damage builds or just ability looping. But like for day one Vow of Disciple, this was pre resilience change. I, the entire team had set up with Reaping Wellmaker which if you use your class ability and get a weapon kill, it guarantees a void well drop. And tenacity only activates when you pick up a void well. So this way, any subclass is able to utilize this. So everybody in the on the team ran like reaping, tenacity, and seeking. So everybody's wells tracked to everybody and gave everybody resistances. Like those two for void mods are easily my ones that are underrated that uh, that you would you should be happy to see and you should be happy to see any of the mods because they're so dang rare yeah absolutely 
Another thing to pay attention to also is each season the artifact has a bunch of mods and sometimes they really synergize with the other mods mm -hmm. out there. Like the, when Void 3.0 had just come out, there was, I forget, what was the one that made everyone uh, blow up? I can't think, think of the name of that mod. It was the Volatile Flow. Was it Volatile Flow? Is that right? That's not, yeah. Anyway, there's a Void, <laughs> there's a void mod that made everyone yes. blow up. It was the Volatile Flow. And uh, like that just synergizes so well with all these elemental wells because you're just blowing up enemies like crazy and then it's creating these wells that are then you can get tenacity to be tankier and it just starts to synergize so well together. So definitely keep an eye out each season on whatever uh, mods are available because some of them have really mm -hmm. powerful synergistic effects. Yeah, like last season there was a champion mod or a, mo a mod that whenever you stun a champion, it ignites them. And it was the one of the most one of the strongest mods in the game. It was unbelievable on how strong it was. Like on this, I think this season's if you damage a champion with an arc ability, it jolts them, and jolt does a pretty decent amount of damage. I obviously I'd, we don't have the experience with like grandmasters yet with that mod, but I heavily suspect it being like decent damage boost when you stun something. So because you also have grenade stun champion or stun overload champions that's gonna be so an awesome pairing you pair those two together and you can also throw in you can also throw in like lightning strikes twice which all which would take up all 10 points of your class ability or class item but they all synergize it's like you throw your arc grenade it increases the grenade recharge you stun with that arc grenade and then it also jolts a bunch because it, it technically would jolt multiple times if you have the fragment spark of shock because then your arc grenades also jolt targets. Oh, so that's it's interesting. I'll have to test that and see. That, that's pretty interesting. Have you actually? I have them together. Okay, that's something we should test. That'd be cool. Yeah, like there's a lot of good. Especially, obviously, they're trying to showcase Arc, arc 3.0 with all of it because it just released. It's the big new thing. Sadly, some of it is still overshadowed by Solar, but uh, or <laughs> the, uh, Hunter is great. But the, the new Super, 10 out of 10. Like Gathering yeah, Storm yeah. is fantastic. I Honestly, just I find the, myself nowadays struggling to find a void build I want to run. Yeah, the it's interesting. I feel like the restoration is so powerful in solar things. Like yes. It's, gonna, it's just healing in the history of Destiny has always been a powerful thing. So Speaking of restoration, being strong, the Lorley nerf, great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was very <laughs> ecstatic to see that Lorley Splendor got nerfed to not give Restoration X2, which is essentially instant healing all the time. Yeah. I'm really happy Proctor about this in spot. PvP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was not just happy for PvE nerfs, but it was also a PvP buff to enemies. Yeah. That thing was <laughs> out of line too powerful in PvE. I feel like it, was, it yeah. was so many people in the day one raid for King's Fall were running that and just basically unkillable. Like I watched so many people trying to die to the to wipe on the boss and they're just like unkillable because they just keep getting restoration proc'd over and over again. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. absurd. It's like there's videos of people standing in like the duality final boss or duality dungeon final boss. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just standing there getting pelted by 30 enemies at a time and just living. Yeah, it was so it's, wild. It's it was so unbalanced. Yeah, it's still strong. It's just not as strong yeah. busted, but definitely a good move, in my opinion, to take that more in line with the other things. Yeah, And then speaking of like buffs and nerfs, the added to exact to the new or not new exotics added champion effects to existing exotics i think was a really good move for weapons Bungie. you mean yes for weapons about? yeah that's yes. a great so just so, for people who might not understand that there's each season there's the different mod types in the artifact so for example you, like i think this season has anti-barrier scout rifle so if you use a yes. scout rifle it can normally when you see those barrier champions your bolts will just plink off of them but if you have this mod equipped on your arms then your bullets will pierce and then eventually break the barrier thing so you can damage them and mm -hmm. deal more and it stuns them yeah yeah exactly but a lot of exotic weapons also have those perks built in intrinsically like the one of the first ones was ariana's vow could be effective against barrier champions and then slowly they started adding more and more of these effects and now a lot of them have that built in which is really cool because that way you don't have to run a mod on your arms to still be able to deal with that type of champion. So it just opens up a lot of build making potential. You don't have to necessarily have every single type of mod from the seasonal artifact just to be able to deal with the champs and higher end content. Yeah, and then there was the addition of anti-barrier to Arbalest and that essentially made all GMs a cakewalk. It's honestly trivial in my opinion. 
I think it definitely deserves like a damage nerf. Yeah, strong but, right now. Like the thing is on top of it, if you break a barrier champion, like if you break a barrier, it has disruption break. So it gets a 50% damage buff to itself on that target. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's absurdly strong. That's so crazy. Yeah. So that, that's my number, like that one. And obviously there's an outlier that I'm not going to mention. It blew up on Twitter, but there's that, but that's in, in raids and stuff. That's a whole different story. But like the addition of intrinsic champion effects towards or on the existing exotics and not just incoming exotics, I think is a big move that they added. So like my, the first one on the list, I think is Malfeasance. It has unstoppable when you trigger the explosion. So like after your five shots hit, it triggers the explosion and, and would stun an unstoppable champion, which I personally think, is, I think that's a cool effect using its exotic perk. Yeah. And nice. then another one that comes to mind, which is honestly one of my favorite ones that they did is La Monarch. It has intrinsic overload, which it used overload on bows is just great in general because bows are relatively strong in Nightfall, like master GM level content. But the, the specific part about Le Monarch's overload is that it only applies to the poison arrow. So if you perfect draw and get the poison application, that applies overload. It's not just on the arrow itself. It requires that perfect draw. And then what's some other ones that got added? I think Skyburner's got barrier. No, it did not. Didn't uh, Wishender just get one? Wishender got barrier. That's, a, that's another good one. This one's heavily underrated right now. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be solid. It does a lot of damage. Like the weapon itself for a primary it does a lot of damage. And I would love to I would love to see this thing get a catalyst that gives it like Archer's Tempo. Oh, that'd be cool. Right. That'd be sweet. Like yeah. how Leviathan's Breath got Archer's Tempo. And but that one's a special version of it because it actually cuts the draw time in half. And it's kind it's good now. Or I, I don't want to don't quote me on that. It's not good. It's okay. I'm not gonna say it's good. It's okay now. <laughs> All right. What other ones got added? And I thought they did six. You got Malfeasance, Monarch, Wishender. I cannot think of what the no, other ones were. I'm struggling to think too. It's not a big deal if we can't think of it. No, one. but yeah. But obviously they have intentions on bringing other exotics forward that are primarily PVE focused things, which I like. I love like the previous seasons they did Bastion. They gave it unstoppable for no apparent reason. Nobody was asking for it. Oh, one thing I'm just realizing we should also mention is regarding like these types of seasonal mods and stuff is that there are certain types of armor from the dungeons called artifice armor yes. that can allow you to slot an additional mod from the seasonal mods. And that's really helpful against champions because you could potentially run like maybe even all three champion type mods on your arms if you can mm -hmm. fit them all or it just opens up a lot of options maybe you still want to use like a, a fastball or something on your gloves but you could still then have the two types of champion mods because you can put one into that extra mod slot it's a little bit annoying to farm them because you have to do them from master level content right from the dungeons yes. and so it's going to be harder to get those perfect stat distributions we were talking about earlier but it's really nice to have those options out there for particular builds where you want to fit in extra slots i would think probably what like the class item and the gloves would be the yes, most cla class and gloves set. are i consider the highest priority with those i know that i know in this season they added they added infernal whip as a helmet mm. mod which mm, yeah i understand why they did that because helmet isn't really used in, in terms of artifact mode but the trivial part about that is that takes away from your finder mods that takes away from your combat style mods for that for, yeah. like finder mods are relatively critical and so Unless, that would be a nice reason to run an artifice helmet because then you right. could still throw the inferno whip on and still have whatever both kinds right. of finder that you yeah absolutely the yeah the and this also can tie into the high stat armor conversation because even though the artifice armor only drops from master level content which they are continuously updating the power level for each season it doesn't just get dropped behind like previous raids did but the master level content is guaranteed stat high stat armor like you can get up to maximum on the on this artifice armor that drops from those master dungeons like you can farm master duality final boss checkpoints and guarantee two drops and pretty much i want to say it's guaranteed one armor piece i don't think it's guaranteed but it's a pretty dang high chance because you have four or there are technically i believe it's 
six weapons from the dungeon and you have the five armor pieces so it's always a pretty much a 50 percent chance but i think the final boss because it's that two slots there's one guaranteed armor on master but yeah like it you can get some relatively spiky armor pieces like i have some pretty nasty armor from farming master duality yeah that's awesome that's on my to-do list i need to get this particular gloves or where i mm -hmm. feel like i really want them the most because for farming loss like the master loss sectors and stuff like that it seems like just having that extra option to slot that in for yeah. gems too both really good times to have an extra mod slot open yeah it pains me to take off fastball sometimes i <laughs> like using fastball and then when i play a lot without it and then i put it on it it's it, nades just go zooming past the target yeah it's one of those things that really messes up like your muscle memory really fast when yes. you get used to one way or the other obviously a majority of this was all about build crafting so i really want bungie to add a, a mod vendor similar to the way that they have so currently ikora where she is in the tower new players or whenever there's a new release for a subclass so for 3.0 for example all players had to purchase four of the fragments at some point and the other five grenades or whatever it was four grenades currently like new players have to go in and purchase everything for just glimmer it's mm -hmm. like twenty five thousand per segment and five thousand or three thousand per grenade yeah it gets pretty expensive <laughs> i i would think what bungie should do is just make a vendor identical to that have three sections your elemental your charge with light your well not even that you could just have the library right there all of the mods right there make them 10k a piece call it there i like that idea i think that you can play the game yeah. go unlock more play the game go unlock some more like it like even i know previously they had mod components and stuff for buying mods which is, was an awful thing and there's other things that you could do like you can include legendary shards but that's a spar a very sparse resource for a new player like i'm sitting here looking at eighty eight thousand in my inventory and i don't know what to do with them yeah, i and, think limit makes sense i like I, it, that's such a big barrier to as a yes. new player to be able to like and the build crafting is one of the coolest parts of the game so it's just it's really frustrating honestly as a content creator to be able to make a cool build video and i can't really expect people to be able to do it for like potentially months because yeah. they don't have and who knows when they'll actually be able to buy a particular mod like that's really frustrating for me so i would love to see that become more accessible to new yeah. players i remember when protective light was super super good and it wasn't sold for like six months yeah it's such a bummer it's kind of like the Gallarhorn situation in Destiny 1. Yeah, exactly. Hey, guess what? You better get it as a drop or it's not going to be sold for another four months yep. or whatever it was at the beginning. Yeah, hopefully they'll do something with that. Maybe in Lightfall, but we will see. They're adding Guardian ranking. It's like a social status. I, just, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, there's a lot that there's a lot that can be in, improved on their current system, which is plenty obvious and I hope it's obvious to them, but uh, like it's one of the most fun parts of the game in my opinion like i i have a buddy just for a last point i have a buddy that is in my clan he never spent his ascendant ascend materials so like he always in all three of his characters postmasters were filled with 10 ascendant shards 50 enhancing prisms always i told him about these builds and showed him how strong they were he was complaining that he was out of materials because he was master working so many armor pieces oh that's me too right now like i the more I get into all the cool builds, like I just am mass working everything and now I'm completely broke again. It goes fast. It's bizarre on how fast you can go through things. And especially pre glimmer cost for mod application, it was glimmer that I even had to worry. It it used to be what, 5,000 for a weapon mod and 500 for any mod on your armor. Don't remind me of those. It was a dark <laughs> time. And then on top yeah. of it, you couldn't just click it. You had to click and hold it. Oh my gosh. You're bringing the quality back of life terrible changes. memories. Oh, yeah. To, to Bungie's credit, they have made a lot of good changes that just make the game a lot faster and easier now. No, and you can apply all that stuff. The best thing is that you can just apply, click one button and dim and apply the entire loadout once you've saved it. So including yeah. all of the mods. So it's really nice. Aren't like 90% of the mods in the game, or not 90%, but like all the finders, targeting, all of that, isn't that vendor drops i swear you could i swear I you get so. those when you turn in like vendor ingrams yeah i think you're right i'm not sure about that I but i think why I they think can't right. just do all of them that way yeah because i know like some of the more like for like trials for example you'd get like adept icarus or whatever from some of that but Which, for regular I, I get ones, the adept mods being in their own special place yeah that's mm -hmm. fine 
they come you can only use them on specific weapons that come from that source yeah it, exactly. make, it makes sense but these are combat style mods the entire yeah, for, game is about combat for just the regular old mods i think it makes sense to make them more accessible just, just take them out of ada's inventory and make them a random drop that like it's a knockout system because you can't get multiples yeah that's true that's a good point like i understand you want to have ada useful but she's the transmog vendor now you did it yourselves yeah i think that's that's good nice thank you for spending some time to teach people about mods i'm sure it'll help a yeah. lot of new people who are getting their feet wet with build crafting and destiny yeah it's definitely one of my favorite parts about this game being able to make it's not just the guardian that's overpowered you can make it even stronger yeah absolutely especially and on top of it with all the our, the subclass 3.0 updates and then strand coming out in lightfall in february it makes me super excited to craft with that and grapple all over the place yep <laughs> it's gonna be fun all right well thank you dude appreciate it